Loveland Frogmen are anomalies first encountered in May of 1955 on a lonely stretch of road just on the outskirts of a small town known as Loveland, Ohio. It was a dark and stormy night when a traveling salesman was driving, suddenly spotting three figures standing under a poorly lit bridge. Through the darkness, he could make out what appeared to be leathery skin and frog-like facial features. One of the creatures held a wand over its head that fired a spray of sparks when the witness quickly drove away. This Ohioan legend is what I believe to be the inspiration for Loveland. Good evening, detective. Loveland is an immersive sim slash cult horror game where you play as a detective exploring a rural trailer park in Loveland, Ohio. I inquired from a developer about the game and they told me Loveland at its core is an immersive sim and there are various ways that the story can unfold. If you spend the time exploring every part of the world, you'll find multiple story paths with several branching dialogue trees that greatly affect the outcome of the final game. We intend for Loveland to have six to seven different endings, so it's the kind of game that gives back as much as you put into it. Of course, I decided to put that claim to the test. Starting off, the visuals in this game are fitting for the mood of the story. It gives me a gritty, grimy aesthetic that mixed with audio, for example the ominous voices of the agency in the beginning, just works. Also speaking of visuals, don't touch the frogs. What the hell? The presence of the cult in the writings and surroundings allows the player to piece the world around them. And there are other subtleties that make Loveland what it is. Oh look, they even got a little frog magnet there. During my playthrough, I was genuinely on edge because of the ambience. I'm so paranoid that somebody's gonna come up on us here. There were also parts that left me in horror and at the mercy of my own actions, which I think is brilliant. The scares have proper buildup and are not out of place as well. After my first playthrough of the demo, I went ahead and played it again. The varying consequences had a way of pulling me back to the game, and I enjoyed every minute. I might just spend a couple days playing this game once the full release is out. I didn't find anything major or critical that needs work, but what I would like to see in this game is perhaps a larger range of tripping in the game depending on how much froggage you've been exposed to. And trust me, I've purposely tried to overdo the amount of frog exposure, but never really hit a cap or never really had any changes in these visual effects. Also, as a minor thing, it would be nice if I could switch out the equipables so I don't have to have a squirt bottle everywhere in my hand. That might just be me. Other than those two nitpicky things though, I would say that the game does well for itself. I'm a big fan of cult horror, as well as immersive sims, and frogs, so I can't wait to see how this game turns out. If you'd like to see my playthrough of Loveland, I'll leave the link in the description. Props to the developers and contributors of Devour Games, I'll leave their links in the description below, including previous games they've made. Support indie developers and subscribe to my channel. This channel is dedicated to small indie game developers and development teams. I showcase indie games through reviews, playthroughs at least three times a week. Leave a like if you did, and comment what you'd like to see next. Also, if you're a small game developer or development team with a game you want me to play through or review, please send me an email. Thanks for watching. Oh, sh fuck, fuck, holy shit. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Don't step in the tall grass, you guys. Just learned that the harder way.